just going to show a little video of a 1.4 TSI Volkswagen or Audi engine, um, how to replace the spark plugs. This is a, a 6R Polo GTI, um, but it applies to all the same to all uh, these 1.4 EA triple one engines. So, first step, let's pull this cover off, slide to the front, get that out of the way, and as you can see, we can get to the core packs. But these two are quite obscured by a few solenoids. The uh, wiring plug for the uh, uh, the recirc valve and the breather pipes, and just some lines off the uh, the intake pipes. So um, yeah, we'll get to getting those out of the way and show you what bits and pieces you do have to remove and some little tips and tricks on how to get these core packs out. As you can see, they're quite flush with the. The wiring loom and you can't really get in there to uh, to get them out so we'll uh, we'll start with so there's a couple of techniques for getting these core packs out uh, there's one where I use like a, a hook tool like this which works quite well and then for the DIY enthusiast there's always the uh, cable tie uh, option which seems to be quite popular which involves slipping a cable tie underneath and around the coil and using the cable tie to pull the, the coils out but as I'll demonstrate I just put the hook in and pop the coils out so something along those lines and it sometimes can help if you can twist the coil like rotate it if you can do this because these coil packs have rubber grommets mounting them as we'll show just in a sec I'll just pop the wiring plug off so as you'll notice as well we can't get to the wiring plug because it's on the bottom side the actual plug and on this one I can feel that someone's already broken it off so this one we will have a little bit of fun popping it off I'll try and find a good one for a demonstration on how to get um, those uh, clips off to get the plugs uh, wiring plugs off at the core pack too as you can see you can't lift them up high enough unless you start popping the loom apart which in this respect we probably will so as you can see Someone has already broken that clip off. It can be still gone off, but it's just difficult doing it from behind. So um, we'll move on to the next one. So as you can see, I've now got number three coil out, which is with this was number four gearbox in, number three, next one along. Um, this one came out on the same amount of um, pulling power required. Um, someone has obviously been in here before. This one luckily isn't broken, so we can actually now see the standard wiring plug. It's a little bit distorted, but what we should be able to do is, is push the plug on and squeeze it on, and then squeeze this, this in, and then we should be able to push the, the plug off. It's a little bit hard to show one-handed. I might be able to just sit it down. A bit of push the plug on, squeeze the tab, and then pull off. So we can take a standard 16mm plug socket, they generally have a rubber or a magnet inside of them to uh, hold the plug, spark plug that is, and then we're just going to by hand crack the spark plug off, we don't really want to be using power tools in this scenario in case we crack the spark plug or snap it off or something like that, or will damage the threads, so um, this is an aluminium cylinder head so if we want to take care and just take that little bit of extra time and That's now loose. I'll just send my magnet down as my socket for the rubber is uh, broken up. And there we go, there's our spark plug out. Looking like we've got a bit of an oil consumption scenario going on, which is pretty standard with these 1.4s if they haven't had the revisions. Let's get the coils out of the uh, number one and number two position. As you can see, this solenoid, if we pull this coil up, we're going to break this line off. Plastic inside of here, this is part of this solenoid, so we need to remove, and it's all above the number one coil. So, best thing is to take off this line, which is a squeeze fit. Someone's broken this connection already. Or you can lift these up with like a right angle pick or a screwdriver. So, that off there. This line will pull off from underneath the other side of this pipe. 
don't know if we can see it just down there, but be aware of that, that rubber fitting doesn't get lost. And then we'll undo this Torx 30, undo this Torx 30, and we'll take this pipe off here, and then we should be able to hinge it all out of the way for a little bit, and we'll unplug the solenoid as well. The best and most reliable method to get these style of plugs off, like this, rather than squeeze down and break this, if you can access it, you can go in behind here, and there's a little tab in there which this lever is connected to and you can actually lift it up and that's what locks it onto these latches here so as we look in there we're actually lifting that tab up with the pick so I'll demonstrate now I'm going to go take this one off the solenoid In. and then if I push with the pick give it a tug there we go and all I'm doing is merely coming in pulling this tab like that and disengaging that lock it helps to push the plug on first because otherwise it's actually hanging on the back side of here so if you push the plug on it comes past it a little bit you come in lift and then slide the plug back easy saves it getting broken saves you struggling gets it off easy as long as you can access it that would be the way you would get this one off as well that's been broken here you would sneak in here and not even be able to see it there You can see it moving there. That's what we're doing mostly, so then I could pull that coil straight out now. So now as you can see, we've now got access to cylinder one and cylinder two coil packs. What I've done is just pulled it off and lifted it out of the way. Um, so I've not actually disconnected this line here, I've just pushed it over to one side. So now we've got all the coil packs out and we've got our spark plugs removed. Um, ready to fit the new ones. I'm fitting standard fit Bosch FR6 HI332. The spark plugs are gapped to 0.8 millimeter, all four of them, and they're to be torqued 28 newton meters. So we've tightened all the spark plugs down to 28 newton meters as per the manufacturer's spec, gapped to 0.8 as mentioned previously, and now we're ready to put our coil packs back in um, and then reassemble the breather system. The one mention I made before was down here, if we can see where this pipe goes onto, there is a rubber grommet there that you may be able to see that's a bit moist with oil there. We need to get that off and get that back in the end of this pipe and then it will slide on. You'll struggle sliding this onto that while it's installed, so you need to put the grommet into here and then slide it back on. Easily drops though, so be careful. Um, when doing so, but that's probably uh, maybe the fiddliest part of the job of them, getting the coils out. So once the coils are pushed back in place, it is always a good work and practice on these coil packs because there's nothing holding them other than the actual coil pack onto the spark plug and around the spark plug tube itself. Just give them a, a crack just with the tap on top just to make sure they are fully seated down because you don't want any of them working the way back up or anything like that with engine vibrations working loose because you'll have been a uh, misfire and you'll be wondering why so uh, yeah just always give them a little bit of a tap and that applies to all Volkswagen Audi or any coil packs that aren't bolted down. So this is the rubber grommet that I was mentioning about earlier that's down. This pipe you'll find this grommet will be stuck on there and it's come out of this pipe. Now you'll struggle real hard if this is on and it's stretched over that pipe that we were just looking at to get this back in. So if you put it back into the breather pipe and then slide onto the, the pipe down here, it, that's the best and easiest way. You'll break it if you try and force it the other way. Like I said, be very, very careful trying to get this off down here. Not because you'll break anything, but if you drop this, you, you'll just have a nightmare trying to find it ends up on top of the supercharger or the injector housings and um, 
yeah, it's just very difficult to then find it. So, and then we can just simply push this back onto that connection down here underneath. And there's the finished article, all coil packs in. Obviously, spark plugs have now been changed. Bolts in here to remember if you took this line off, remember that. The bolt in here. This needs to be clipped on accurately. Um, we need to make sure this pipe has gone underneath the inlet pipe and has gone onto the elbow here perfectly correctly. Um, and just make sure we haven't damaged any of the breather hoses and that we've plugged in our recirc valve, etc. And none of the hoses are pinched or damaged. Some people will remove the, the boost lines as well from the boost solenoid. Um, I like to say I put it all out of the way and I worked around it, it was no problem, but if you are removing it for whatever reason, just make sure you put it all back together correctly. As we can hear, nice and smooth idle, with no uh, misfires or rough running or anything like that. So always check afterwards, the, um, the performance is uh, still there in the vehicle, so we'll take this down the road and do some full throttle drives in the car, just to make sure there's no misfires under load. But it's a good check that idle was also obviously to make sure we haven't um, got any issues. But it's only a spark plug change. As long as everything's plugged in and put back together correctly, there should be no issues.